quick, but getting there. <laughs> so uh, in terms of uh, analytics, um, my current interest at the moment is text analytics. So it's something that I just picked up this, this year, actually. So I'm really excited about that. So I'll be talking a bit more about uh, text analytics uh, in some of the examples that I'll be showing. Right. So, um, so to, to reiterate uh, the topic again, so basically I'm going to be talking about um, the benefits. Well, actually, I'm going to be talking about my personal uh, uh, how I use R, uh, both at work <coughs> and both at home, in which basically um, at home I use it basically for compared, uh, uh, data mining competitions and all other things as well. So, and this, this is a snapshot of my personality, I suppose, both at work and at home. Um, when, I'm, when I'm at work, I'm really professional and pragmatic, you know, I follow all the structured processes, but at home I'm a little bit more playful, so I test different things, I experiment with different algorithms, uh, see what works and what not, uh, take a bit of risks. Uh, and yeah, so just just trying all sorts of things. Um, so the agenda for today. Um, so I'll just I'll give a very quick introduction to R, because um, I understand that a couple of people here are still quite new to R. Um, I'll also talk about briefly what I use R for, and go into the uh, the I suppose the, uh, the key part of the presentation, basically uh, uh, how I use R at work and uh, how I use R at home, and uh, and I'll take some questions later. So. Before I carry on, I'll, I'll say that um, it, this presentation is it's not going to be technical at all. Uh, it's going to be very, uh, uh, I suppose, really high-level overview of because uh, there's not a lot of time. So I want to keep it. I want to keep it short for about thirty to forty minutes. So, but I'm happy to take questions as I go along if you want to know the details. So, so all right. So um, I'll start talking about give, give a quick introduction to R. Uh, so it's essentially it's a statistical program. Uh, created by statisticians for stati statisticians. Um, um, it's these days, you know, R it's a lot of things. Um, it's it can do so many things. So I don't really know why this anymore. But uh, I know I use R mainly for data analysis and statistical modeling. Um, uh, just just a few things to know about R is that it's open source, uh, so it's easy, it's free, and it's easy to find help in the open community. Um, it understands mathematical computations as well. So so if if, if you think like a mathematical or statistician, it's, you, you use R pretty much naturally. But uh, the key thing that I suppose I want to point out is the uh, is this feature here where it's got thousands of packages of different implementations of different algorithms. So it has essentially, um, <coughs> it's at, almost anyone can create a package and just host it up in, in the web. It's open source. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to get like the latest algorithm, usually you can get it. You, you can usually get it. So um, I'll go through later a bit about that. So, but I suppose for those of you who are still quite new to R, um, what do I mean by packages? So, essentially, uh, R, that's, that's essentially the main program within R. Uh, within R, um, it's got a set number of functions which you can use, but uh, if you want to do certain, uh, those, I suppose, certain things, uh, you, you need to download some packages, which, which, which I suppose are but a bunch of functions that does uh, certain algorithms. Algorithms that does uh, what you I suppose what you want. So, for example, um, if you want to do like really beautiful uh, graphics plot um, or any visualization, uh, you would download the uh, the ggplot too, and from there you, you are able to ex you get access to special functions to create really nice graphics plots. So, uh, as you see in the top right there. So, for example, if you wanted to do image analysis, um, you would go and download the e uh, ev image. So that will allow you to. That gives you access to do a few more interesting things like image analysis over there and uh, random forest, um, at the most popular, the one of the most popular algorithm uh, for predictive modeling, uh, random forest. So and you can download that as well. So essentially, all these packages, there's 500, uh, I, don't, I don't know how many packages there are at the moment, but I know it's a lot. So and there's literally there's different packages for different things. So it depends on what you want. You can get it pretty uh, easily. So, cool. And um, so I suppose I'll talk, I'll dive into first uh, R at work. So just a quick introduction to the log analytics. Um, I suppose we help client, clients capture, manage, and uh, analyze uh, data to help solve important business problems to make uh, informed decisions. So now we, as the log analytics, we take a really a holistic approach to data analytics. So we don't just we don't just take data uh, from someone to help you solve the problem, build models, and then pass it back to. We actually go through the whole journey. We, we think of ourselves as a business partner, as opposed to our, with our clients. So we go through, we basically understand what the, the business requirements is, are. We then understand what the data is and how that can solve the, uh, the business problem. So they go through the whole process of, I suppose, cleaning the data, preparing the data, uh, uploading it to a, proper, to a proper database, and do the modeling and interpret the results and then just help clients 
one statement we can evaluate what else we can do to help our clients grow. It's a really holistic process of uh, data of data analysis. And so essentially, this so this is just to give you, I suppose, a quick uh, background or a quick uh, understanding of, of like what we we do in a uh, lot analysis. So if you can think of the timeline and the level of activity of the robot analysis, uh, you've got imaging process in here, which basically you know it's like the kickoff meeting, it's basically brainstorming of different ideas, trying to understand what how we can help our clients. You go you go through the planning process to basically I suppose put put a workflow together. Um, build a team together to of different expertise to do different work. Um, and alongside that, you, you've got the activity of loading the data, which usually takes quite a while because we, the data that we build uh, is actually really big. So we build like millions or zillions of records. And it's really, really common to see, to, to be dealing with that sort of crisis. And then data preparation and modeling sort of occurs somewhere towards the end. And uh, the role of R essentially is towards the end. So, so we go through a really careful and structured process to, uh, to, to make sure that we, are, that we are dealing with the right, uh, that we are solving, you know, we are on the right track to solve the right problem. So then we apply the, the modeling, which, which R plays a role in that. So, okay. Now, um, aside from R, we do use other tools as well. So for example, um, so we usually store our data in a SQL Server. It's, um, it's one of the better tools to handle uh, large data uh, large data sets. And, uh, <coughs> so, so for things like segmentation, we do we use self-organizing maps as well. So the, that's a snapshot of uh, the discovery software. Uh, we do geospatial analysis as well. It's one of our it's one of our oh, it's, I suppose it's one of the lot analysis uh, specialty uh, doing geospatial analysis. Can we use uh, some other softwares to do that as well, other than R. And uh, for modeling, that's when that's when we start to use R. And we do use self assistance as, as well as us. And for visualization over there, that's Tableau. So the R R is just probably R is just one of the few tools that we use here in, in the office. And I'll explain why that's the case. So so but when we do use R, um, some of the things that we do uh, are set analysis, analysis and statistics modeling. Uh, we do do time series analysis, and we've got social network analysis and data visualization. And much more recently, we've been involved this year, we've been doing a bit more text analytics. Okay, so, so I'll, I'll go through some examples. Yep, so I'll go through some examples of, of, uh, of some of the work we do. Um, unfortunately, I'm not able to show uh, real data um, this is all has to be about data because of client confidentiality, so confidentiality. So, um, but it should illustrate uh, uh, basically the, what I'm trying to say. So this is this is basically using the, uh, the forecast package to do uh, to do to forecast uh, the time series. So, so that x axis there that's your time that's your I suppose that's your time time scale, and the y axis can be say for example retail activity. So. Imagine a business who, who sort of wants to know uh, the retail activity and be able to, I suppose, make informed decisions to, to know when retail activity is hitting the low and when it's hitting the high. So the red, that's the red curve there. That's the actual retail activity. Uh, and the Y is basically what we did to, to predict the retail activity. So you can see a little bit of uh, seasonality going on here, which carries on towards uh, the year. That line there, that line that strikes through there, uh, that's that's when we start doing the forecast. So we forecast essentially a few months ahead. Um, and that estimate there shows how, how accurate uh, some of our forecastings are. So, and that's basically all using the forecast package, which, is I, which I highly recommend for time series analysis. So a bit of visualization. So I'm not going to go through in detail to, to dissect some of this, this charts here. But, um, this is to show, I suppose, uh, how powerful visualization is to understand what's going on with the data. So, so take take the far right example, this far right uh, example. Okay. Um, if imagine if we did not put lens for the, the different engine types, they would all just be black and we wouldn't actually see any patterns. So, but by team by putting a different lens and different colors, um, it helps sort of understand what how those two trends are actually different. And uh, and yeah. So and 
that's basically using GNT Cloud Tool, which is a, which is a very good uh, visualization tool in R. And uh, so, yeah, um, any questions so far? So if, if you've got any questions, just feel free to stop me um, if you want to know more details, because uh, I'm just going to put this in a quick uh, <coughs> more to go through. What's the, Eugene, what's the package you use to make that spaghetti chart on the bottom right? Uh, Back a few slides or what? Um, that one, yeah. Um, oh, right, so that's, that's called Tableau. Um, Actually, that's a, uh, that's a, it's a, it's a commercial uh, program. Yeah, it's a, it's, it, it does only just data visual, it just does data visualization. So it, 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 it's, it can, it can, yeah. So it's, uh, I can't remember the license, but I think it's about a thousand <coughs> That's really nice pretty charts, but uh, just made me this that. Thousand dollars or two thousand if you want to have a very big use of it. Oh, right. like two versions. Okay. Okay, yeah, so yeah, I um I'm not very familiar with with, with that software, uh, to be honest, but uh, I've seen some of the outputs for that, so yeah, it's it, it's really nice. Um, but yeah, how much did you say it costs? So two versions is like a Um, where was I? So yeah, I'll talk about some of the challenges that we that I face in uh, in using R at work. So some of you know the uh, you've probably seen this error screen before. So essentially, essentially um, R is not really good at well R stores everything in memory, and it, it's not it's really inefficient in terms of uh, storing data. So essentially, when you're trying to uh, I suppose when you're trying to model um, on a really large data set, say 500,000, it often it often will crash when you say try to run random forest or or a really really powerful algorithm. And um, and so yeah, essentially what, what we what we try to do is uh, we try to store everything in SQL, so that's where we keep all our data sets. So if you do ever need to say split the data, select a certain columns and you know the rest, we will just do it off in SQL and then we use R. And I will just basically uh, read off. <coughs> um, I will talk about that a bit later. Um, yeah. Why, why don't you use SQL data mining tools? Because you can store data mining tools in Emacs rather than using R. You can store yeah. so, points, points, things. Yeah. So, what do you mean by SQL data mining tools? Yeah, um, essentially we do our data uh, cleaning. Uh, we, that's all, we, we do it all in SQL, but uh, for some, say, say you want to do a random forest uh, or, or some sort of decision tree, that's when we, that's when we use R. SQL is dependent on SQL. Okay. It's really, yeah. Yeah. It's really a I suppose the uh, the biggest issue or the biggest challenge that we face uh, in, in the right now is, is uh, issue with standardization. So essentially, you're not the only one using R. So we know. So I suppose this is one of the one of the good things about R. It's also actually one of its downsides. So things like transferring the skills across the team. So um, you know, I, I I think that uh, that R is really simple to use, but not everyone feels the same way, and some people do actually really struggle to pick R very quickly. So it, it, if you're going to be doing a job and you need to, I suppose, once you finish the job and then someone else needs to pick it up to apply to a different job, then you've got a, you've got a real issue here because that person needs to understand what you've done and how you've done it. Um, and if they, if they can't pick it up quickly, then you've got you've got a problem somewhere in the pipeline. So, and that's one of the reasons why I is preferred over other commercial softwares like SaaS and uh, SaaS and Salford systems. So they've got a green interface which which I suppose compresses that learning curve. So it's, it's much easier, I suppose it's much easier to, to, to use, to quickly pick it up and then uh, deploy it straight away. Uh, there's also the other issue with uh, reliability of the packages. So a 
earlier on, I mentioned that there's, you can just define thousands of packages out there on different implementations. So, but I suppose the question is, how do you know which which one which packages can be relied on? Like a lot of these packages, you know, like they, they might be new and they might be innovative, but you don't really know if if they've actually done it properly. So, so imagine like your the most popular random forest package, even that has some bugs as well. So, so it, you know, it's 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 really hard to I suppose when you're trying to deploy in a real commercial setting, so that can be a pretty important issue to, to deal with. So, and I was just going to say, so yeah. the commercial packages you have in are they don't have bugs in them? Uh, well, they they I suppose that's, this is a good question actually. But I, I suppose think of commercial. Excel, it's full of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The SPSS one that failed a whole lot of site students coming along, but I, I yes. just thought I'd ask the question. I mean, there's obvious bugs, and then there's the ones you don't know. About. Yeah, I suppose. I suppose my, my answer to that is that SPSS at least, at least is a is a commercial. It's recognised as a commercial tool. Um, with R, you know, it's it's an open it's an open source. You know, it's you don't you, you're trying to. I suppose you're when you when you're you know, placing when you're putting your money, you're putting at least you know for SPSS here. There's some sort of assurance that they do they do do research, they do provide help or any they do answer any queries that you have. Whereas R you, you just you just can't, you know, you just have to send an email to that person who's working in, in the university and he'll answer you. He'll just say, Oh, you know, you know, just go fix it yourself, I've got no time. So I've I've had that before. So like yeah, some of them aren't really helpful at all. So and I, I suppose I can understand it's it's an open source software, so it is it is an issue. Um uh, I suppose as a client, you know, if, if I, I suppose if I, if I if I purchase your services, you know, and, and if I find find out that you 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 know you're using a free software that a lot of, that that doesn't that isn't really commercially recognized, you know, there's you know I, I question I question that decision. So you get into your own something. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, um, and I suppose the other issue is the uh, the standardized marketing procedures. So, and what I mean by that is. I suppose R, uh, there's, there's so many ways that you can code in R. R is a, it's like a programming tool almost, so everything reads on some sort of script. And um, and everyone has a certain way of writing the script, so so that that, that is an issue because um, I suppose once again, so yeah, if you're going to transfer that, if someone else is, is going to read what you've done, you know, um, it, it will take a very long time to pick it up as well. So yeah, so that goes back to transfer. R is open source. Yeah, but for what? If you've got problems with fitting everything into memory, why not use something like Revolution uh, Revolution GNR as a time lapse? Because the presumably the license fees are for the consequence of making sure that you're fitting the right thing out. Yeah. The thing about Revolution though is the uh, they they've found a way to I suppose store the data in uh, as bindings, but you you've got to save you've got to use a specific format that, that, that uh, based on revolution. So if you wanted to do, or actually, I'm, I'm not, uh, well, I'm not very familiar still, but um, I believe if you wanted to do like like a random forest or a certain sort of algorithm, you, you can't actually do it because you have to rely on the, uh, the revolution specific function. I think it's called an Rx function. So yeah, it's, um, but yeah, but revolution uh, itself, it's, it's still based off uh, the open source R. So there's, I think there's another, there's R Studio as well, which which actually is like a, has a very nice GUI interface uh, on top of R. So, and Revolution is just one of them. Uh, any questions? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, apart from those points, how have you, have you been able to sort of draw people over from other programming languages um, to R, especially? I'm just learning R now. The last few months from SAS. Um, it's been pretty challenging, yeah, ex ex exactly, because um, I suppose uh, R, R has, is a slightly different, has a diff slightly different way of programming. It's, um, it's, it may be, it, it might be not, it's not very natural to some people. So we have had that problem, basically, like someone not, you know, not being familiar or not really liking uh, the way it's been structured. So it's, um, 
I, I only program in R, so I can't say much. Okay. I can speak for everyone or people with other programming backgrounds, but there is, yeah, it, it, there is a learning curve to, to sort of understand it and say and go, R doesn't look like that. It's, it's actually a lot simpler or it's actually a little bit more, it's not probably not the best way to go about it, but uh, it I works like that. The yeah, loop is the biggest part. R is pretty quirky to, for a lot of uh, more experienced, or not more experienced, but people from different uh, programming backgrounds like C sharp or Python. But yeah. So you have yeah, a question? So is that one that you can check the reliability of these packages? Is that the one? Yeah. Yeah, I was actually um, in the good point you meant to check the, you know, the authors. The authors are expertise in a particular area. Yeah. And if you look at the author, you know, they might have experience in 20 years in that particular field. That might indicate that uh, it's a good package. Yes. And also another experience is actually, you know, when you contact this author, my experience is they're pretty good normally. They have actually like within 30, 30 seconds now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 30 seconds. Yeah. Well, I don't know how many of you have got to be yeah. or yeah. you know what you're saying. Yeah. Good point because uh, it really varies. So some people are very, very helpful. Um, I've encountered some people who are just really, they're just really, uh, I suppose, they're not very nice. So they, just go, they, just, they just think, you know, that, that you should be able to fix it yourself. I think that's probably a bit of a lot of the packages are developed by academics, so they see you as a nasty commercial profit-making enterprise. Yeah. Yeah, there's a bit of that in it. But yeah. at the same time, something like Random Forest, that guy, I don't know why he helps, because he's got another, he's got a real job. He doesn't, he, yeah. But you send him an email and he'll respond to you within 12 hours from the States and yeah. ask you a question. It's just amazing. Yeah, so yeah. So yeah, yeah. and it comes back again, I suppose there's no consistency in some of these packages, so, and I suppose, I suppose from a, another point as well is that, but academically uh, and theoretically, they might be really intelligent, they, they, might, they might know what they're doing, but they might not be great programmers, so, like, there's a lot of bugs in some of the algorithms, so, and, and I suppose there's, there's two things you need to consider as well. Um, yeah. So, and I suppose, so I'll talk about how uh, the law is trying to, so, so trying to address some of those so, in terms of um, in terms of I suppose standardization across the team, so what we've done is um, we try to create like I suppose a repository of of certain uh, set scripts that we know have worked in the past uh, in other projects. It's also things like uh, so this is a snapshot of some of the examples. So, but some of the things that we do do as well is like elasticity elasticity modeling. So, and uh, we've done that well in the past. So we decided to just keep some of those functions and just store it. So anyone who wants to say do elasticity modeling again, we'll, we'll go to, we'll, we'll, we'll first need to, I suppose, look at the repository and pick and use those examples rather than recode up everything again, which takes a lot of time. Um, so, I suppose, uh, this was a, so it's just some illustration of what I mean by standardized function. So, say if you wanted to create a density plot, um, if, if you were to do it the first time, you probably, you know, one would probably uh, write that those, those lines of code there which is really, really long and really complicated. Probably take a while. Some, some of you here will go on pretty new. You probably won't be able to understand what that means after about, maybe perhaps after a few hours, you probably understand what that means. But uh, what we've done is, so the, the, the way we've done it is we, we call, we created a function, which is called that density plot. So, and just to simplify things, so essentially all you need to do then is just go, just use this set function, which is now called density plot, and just specify the data set and just the column number and you'll just do uh, and you just do whatever you want. So then uh, well you will just do your density plot so not whatever you want. But uh, so yeah this is the illustration I suppose that's that's how we sort of try to keep a standardized process in the team and to simplify everything so every, someone else, someone new can pick up quite easily and actually know ah everyone's so essentially everyone's using the same thing so everyone knows what everyone else is doing. So and that really helps uh, will speed up the process, uh, the work process. And uh, and yeah, and I suppose there was a comment on uh, on on store, storing data. Um, we use, what we do is we use ROTDT for, um, which is a package in R, which sort of, I suppose, communicates um, with our database, our SQL database. So essentially what we do is we, we uh, well, this ROTDT allows you I suppose write SQL functions in R. So essentially you can if you if you are familiar with 
So, yeah. All right. So um, before I move on to R at home, uh, any questions at all? Um, Is it standard sort of? Uh, the of the, uh, the of the oh yeah, it, it, it won't cover the majority of the work you do, but um, it usually does work quite well. So and the reason why is because um, all the way from data cleaning and data processing, which we've taken a really structured and a really careful approach in in, in cleaning the data. So almost everything is you know the, the way we've done things is we've done it in a very consistent manner. So that usually will work for most cases. So unless unless you're doing like a really different type of <coughs> or you're solving a different type of data, then maybe it might not work well. But uh, it's for most cases it, it, it does work very well. Um, we use uh, SQL database, so 